The Prison House of Language by Friedrich Jameson, first published in 1972, is a critical examination of structuralism and Russian formalism. Jameson's analysis serves as an entry point into understanding the theoretical underpinnings of 20th century literary theory and its evolution. The work offers a historical overview and critique of structuralism, focusing on key figures in Russian formalism, such as Roman Jakobson and Viktor Shlovsky, and their successors in French structuralism, including Ferdinand de Saussure, Claude L. V. I. Strauss, and Roland Barthes. Jameson positions structuralism as a significant intellectual movement that influenced the humanities, particularly literary theory, linguistics, and cultural studies. His aim is to provide a critical and historical account of this movement by situating it within the context of Russian formalism and showing how formalism laid the groundwork for structuralism. One of Jameson's central concerns is how language and form became the primary focus in the study of literature, which he argues comes at the expense of historical and social context. In this way, Jameson explores how formalism and structuralism, while groundbreaking, can also limit interpretation by imprisoning thought within language structures. Jameson begins by discussing Russian formalism, a movement that emerged in the early 20th century and profoundly influenced structuralist thought. Russian formalists, such as Roman Jakobson and Viktor Shlovsky, were concerned with the literariness of texts focusing on how literary devices distinguish literary language from everyday speech. Formalism emphasized the material aspects of language, its sounds, structures, and devices, rather than the content or meaning. A central concept in Russian formalism was ostanny, or defamiliarizationly, introduced by Shlovsky. This idea suggested that art's function is to make the familiar strange, forcing readers or viewers to perceive everyday objects and experiences in a new light. By disrupting automatic perception, literature could reveal the mechanics of language and narrative. Jameson acknowledges the revolutionary potential of this concept as it shifts the focus of literary analysis. From content to form, Jameson critiques Russian formalism for what he perceives as its apolitical stance. While formalists claimed that literature should be analyzed for its structure rather than its social or ideological implications, Jameson argues that this neglects the broader historic and social context in which literary works are produced and consumed. For Jameson, this apolitical focus limits the potential for a dialectical understanding of literature, one that accounts for both form and content as part of a larger social process. Jameson then moves to structuralism, which built on many of the insights of Russian formalism but expanded them into a broader theoretical framework. The foundatic figure in structuralism is Ferdinand de Saussure, whose course in general linguistics, 1916, introduced key concepts that would shape the movement. Saussure's central contribution to structuralism was his theory of the linguistic sign, composed of the signifier the form of a word, and the signified, the concept it represents. Saussure emphasized that the relationship between signifier and signified is arbitrary and based on convention. This idea led to a broader structuralist insight. Language is a system of differences, 
meaning that words derive their meaning not from any inherent connection to what they represent, but from their place in a network of relations with other words. For Jameson, Sosius' work represents a turning point in intellectual history because it shifted the focus of linguistics from the historical development of language diachrony to the synchronic structure of language as a system at any given moment. This synchronic approach influenced structuralism's emphasis on the underlying structures that govern all human activities, from language to myth to literature. Jameson goes on to discuss how Saussurean linguistics was adapted by figures like Claude L. V. I. Strauss in anthropology and Roland Barthes in literary and cultural studies. L.V.I. Strauss applied structuralist ideas to the study of myths, arguing that myths, like languages, are structured by binary oppositions and governed by deep rules. L.V.I. Strauss sought to uncover the universal structures of the human mind by analyzing the underlying patterns of myths from different cultures. Similarly, Roland Barthes applied structuralist methods to literature, arguing that literary texts can be seen as systems of signs that, when analyzed, reveal the structures that organize human culture. Barthes, in works like S. Ed, focused on how readers interact with texts, seeing literary meaning not as something inherent in the work but as the product of the reader's interaction with the structures of the text. Jameson acknowledges the intellectual power of structuralism in its ability to uncover hidden patterns and structures, but he is critical of its limitations. Structuralism, he argues, tends to treat texts as autonomous systems, divorced from history, ideology, and social context. In Jameson's view, this represents a form of intellectual imprisonment, a structuralism confines interpretation to the internal relations within a system, rather than considering the external forces that shape and are shaped by those systems. The title of Jameson's book, The Prison House of Language, refers to his central critique of structuralism and formalism that they enclose thought within the structures of language, preventing a fuller understanding of how literature and culture interact with historical and social forces. Jameson uses this metaphor to highlight how structuralism's focus on language as an autonomous system obscures the larger social and material conditions that shape human experience. Jameson contends that language, while important, is not the only determinant of meaning. Structuralism's focus on language leads to a kind of formalist reductionism, where the complexities of history, politics, and ideology are overlooked. He argues for a dialectical approach to literary and cultural analysis one that can account for both the formal properties of texts and the historical and social conditions in which they are produced. For Jameson, the critique of structuralism is not a rejection of its insights, but a call to move beyond its limitations. He sees value in the structuralist method of analyzing the internal relations of texts but he insists that this must be complemented by an understanding of how texts relate to the material world. Jameson's The Prison House of Language is part of his broader project of developing a Marxist literary theory that engages with contemporary intellectual movements. In this book, Jameson seeks to situate structuralism within a larger historical and ideological framework, showing how it emerged in response to specific intellectual 
and social conditions. His critique is not only of structuralism, but of any theoretical approach that abstracts literature from its social and historical context. Jameson S. work has had a lasting impact on literary theory, cultural studies, and critical theory. His emphasis on the dialectical relationship between form and history has influenced scholars in various fields who seek to integrate structuralist insights with a more politically engaged approach to literature and culture.